there are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. We're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the baby. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the, the case. Thought that was that was the, the case. Welcome to the Hypothetical Institute, a podcast about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. No, uh, you're not. I'm Cam. There's no Salty this week. We are Sans Salt. He's in mourning. Just us peppery boys. Poor old Salt is in mourning for Prince Philip. Yeah. Um, he, he couldn't. He's like, boys, I know you're going to have some laughs, some some japes, some chortles, but uh, I just can't be a part of it. I can't joke about his royal highness prince philip gone too soon gone like three months too soon did you see he nearly made the ton did you see a lot of people like I and mean, we were all the talk of like you know national mourning countries in shock and like legitimate you know newspapers were saying that about australia and new zealand yeah <laughs> so no no one cared like uh, the people that cared i don't know i don't trust them no they're, they're not to be trusted some of the stuff, like, in the UK, some of the stuff about it was so weird. I guess because they, they have all these protocols in place for when a royal dies, right? Yeah. And I guess for, like, a, for the Prince Philip and probably for the Queen, they have, like, these extra ones. I don't know if they would have this stuff in place if, like, Harry died or whatever. Mm. But stuff like the one of the train, like, route websites, like, I don't know, whatever the British equivalent is of the Metro Trains website, mm. they went grayscale. Yeah. As a sign of respect, until people were like, we can't read, like, I'm colorblind and I can't read the train thing anymore. Well, the, the official, did you see the official Twitter account say, yeah, you're right. I can't read it either. We'll get someone to sort it out. Yeah. <laughs> the weekend, I, I don't, no one's in. It's just me. And then their solution was like, oh, we're going to have a, you know, an option so you can still turn it black and white if you want to read, <laughs> solemnly read the train timetable. <laughs> You want to make sure you're mourning correctly by reading the timetable. Uh, I saw, did see um, they'd spelled out uh, H R H, and then the royal some sort of royal crest and pieces of fish at a fish shop. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so there was some salmon, so salmon fillets with a H R H, and there's little dots of tuna, and uh, I think what the British call kippers around there as well. So that was um. That made me really, you know, just really emotional. This, they are, they're weird about stuff over there, though. Like, it's, I think it's sort of an extension of their whole poppy madness. You know how, mm. like, they're all, like, the whole poppy thing went way too far in the UK, where I think that it's quite controversial not to wear a poppy. And then it sort of kept on getting extended the time in which you should be wearing a poppy. Yeah, right. So the, the, we are talking about Prince Philip on the show today. That's our topic. Yeah, we've spoken about him before. Yeah, I felt like uh, when there was a lot of talking about, you know, all of Prince Philip's misdeeds over the years, Luke, mm. you seemed a little uh, put out that no one was remembering your main thing. <laughs> I mean, I just did one one tweet about it. You seemed incredibly put out. It's not put out at all. It was a pretty, a pretty standard tweet by my... Seems standard. like you're a little bit mad online. No. Normal tweet. Oh, so one, you've, you're saying you've never been mad online. One normal tweet from Luke. Okay. Um, but that is one of my favourites. 
And now, now that you've mentioned it, uh, if people want to go back and listen to our episode about the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, uh, I don't know, it's in the feed somewhere. Early, like, early on, I think, it's like, like episode four or something. Yeah. Um, but you know what we learned about that was the WW, WWF were started really weirdly. <laughs> yeah. Have had a long history of of weird and awful things up until like quite recently. Uh, my main one is the uh, started by eugenicists and use as a back channel for South African businesses during apartheid, um, which I went to Wikipedia mm, pretty recently to look at that, and it had been scrubbed. Mm. All of that stuff was gone, and then I went back recently and it was back again. Um, it kind of reminds me, you know, it's, it's hard to know what, like, hard to keep up with that Wikipedia page and what's true and what isn't. Much like the Green Jello Wikipedia page. <laughs> uh, 90s novelty, well, to most novelty act, to me, just a good album, a good song, good artist. Mm. Uh, singers of Three Little Pigs, amongst other great songs. Yeah. Alternative Which Tentacles? I, no. Were they associated with in any way? I don't think so. You think that's the Dick uh, Jello Biafra record label? Yeah, maybe I'd, I'm just getting confused by the Jello. No, they're um, associated with Tool. So Maynard from Tool played drums on uh, some, if not all, of their albums uh, or some of their early songs. They, yeah, the Wikipedia page tells uh, weaves a tale, and I don't know where the truth lies. <laughs> and it's been kind of one of my favourite little internet curios for a while. We're not talking about that though. No, I feel like, yeah, at some point you're going to have to explain the connection. <laughs> it's just the, the Wikipedia page for Green Je- Jelly tells a tale, and so does the Wikipedia page for the World Wildlife Fund, yep. but it would seem that there is a shadow war occurring within the edits of the World Wildlife Fund Wikipedia yes. page. Yeah. And also, I think we probably needed to mention at some point that Prince Philip was instrumental in setting up the World Wildlife Fund. He was a, a co-founder of the World Wildlife Fund. Um, it's also like had controversy of hiring mercenaries uh, and, and hit squads and stuff over the years. Uh, I, I haven't actually looked up any more of that. It's all on our, all on our last show, I think. Um, but we thought we'd dive into Prince Philip just because... You know, royals, lizards, uh, the coronavirus or him saying he wanted to die and come back as a bacteria to kill the world, to help depopulate the world. That quote's being trotted out a lot. Let's get into it all. Where did you start, Cam? Have you you got a starting point? I started by just looking at Prince Philip videos. Because as well as, like, like you were complaining ad nauseum on Twitter, like people were concentrating on like some of his racist gaffes and just forgetting about the eugenics eugenic stuff. Yeah. But what I noticed when I was like looking at Prince Philip videos is people were also forgetting that he was just generally in, like an asshole all the time. Not even like even when he wasn't being racist, he was being weird. <laughs> and there was this great video that was on like Royal Family Channel News. Mm-hmm. Uh which I sort of expected to be a little more posy, but mm-hmm. <laughs> was not. Uh, but it was just a video of him, like, visiting a school with the Queen. And the Queen's, like, looking at the kid's finger paintings and stuff. And, like, some kid, like, reads a little thing to her. Like, oh, this is what I had for lunch. And she's like, mm, very good. Meanwhile, Prince Philip's walking around. And he's like, oh, you don't teach the kids joined up writing anymore? And the teacher's like, yeah, we do. And it's joined up. He's like, mm, doesn't look like it to me. It's very bad. <laughs> just fucking ragging on some kid's <laughs> handwriting in front of him. Yeah. I feel like that's a thing that probably our parents' generation and up, probably a, a generation before them, would be like super upset by. <laughs> we don't we don't do cursive anymore, and that's evidence. No, so w- where I really started with Prince Philip was the numbers. Oh hell yeah, I got some numbers gear. So the <laughs> the stupidest thing I saw with the numbers. Was all right. Let's let's go through the numbers. He's born on the tenth of June, nineteen twenty-one. Yep. So he was ninety-nine years old when he died. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be precise, he was ninety-nine years, nine months, and thirty days old, mm-hmm. or a total of 
36,463 days old. So, uh, 99 years, nine months old. He also died on April 9, mm-hmm. which is the ninth day of the month. Yep. And was the 99th day of the year. So Whoa. there's a whole lot of nines. Also, 4th of the 9th, 2021, if you add all of those numbers up, yep. you get 18. And Whoa. then if you add those numbers up, 1 plus 8, you get 9. Whoa. So I don't know how you can look at all of these nines, Robo, and be like, that's just a coincidence. Now, Cam, how many days old did you just say he was? Uh, 36,463. Interesting. So if you added 3 and 6, mm-hmm. what, what do you, you got? Get? Uh, <laughs> you'd get 9. And then if you added the other set, three and six, you've got nine. So you've got nine, four, nine. <laughs> yeah. So like just a, ignore that four. Well, no, but if you drew a heart around it and put the four in the middle, mm. nine loves nine. Oh. Think about it. Yeah. What else you got? Well, actually, the thing that I was looking at about this did not explain why the 36463 thing was in any way important. I guess it's a like. It's a palindrome, so that's sort of something. Yeah, yeah, they they read backwards and forwards. I bet that you could twist that into something. Yeah, but they didn't bother. Uh, but, I mean, the most basic B thing about all of these nines is 99 years and nine months, that's three nines. Uh, ninth day of the month on the 99th day of the year, that's three nines. Why don't we just flip those nines upside down? Uh, you've only got a whole bunch of six six sixes everywhere, don't you? You do. It's all sixes. Yeah. I d- is there a? I mean, a recurring numbers are a big one, but a six. If you're flipping nines to sixes, because nine doesn't seem to come up as a power number that often, does it? No, but apparently it's very important. But <laughs> I feel like the main importance of it is that when you flip it upside down. Yeah. Um. Now we mentioned a quote before, Cam. I got some numbers to blow your mind. Are you ready? Yeah. Go for it. We mentioned that quote before, uh, where he said. Uh, he would like to be reincarnated as a deadly virus in order to help with the world's overpopulation problem. Mm-hmm. Um, now, he said that in 1988. Yep. If you were born in 1988 and you died in 2021, how old would you be? <laughs> Fuck you. 33. Uh, 33, yeah. That's what I was going to say. The most, the strongest power number. I was going to say 32. Because I, mean, I was de- like, it does depend when you were born and, and die in each year, but yeah, well, because I was actually just thinking about like someone who I knew who was born in 1988. I was like, well, they're 32. That doesn't that doesn't add up. You're making me look like a fool. Um, someone commented on that. Uh, I didn't. That wasn't my original research coming up with the 33. Full disclosure, it was someone on Reddit. Uh, I think conspiracy no poll, but they also said that. Um, he has died now at the end of COVID-19 mm-hmm. to be reincarnated into a more deadly variant COVID called COVID-21. 21. Yep. So he's coming back. So the reason he's died is, is somehow, I, mean, I don't know why COVID-19 needed, needed to play a part. I guess it needed to just get some steam up. Mm. He's like, I need, you know, I can, he's like the striker in, in football and soccer. Everyone else can do the work to get me the ball and get it in that right spot. I'll die, come back as COVID-21, kick, it through. kick that goal and depopulate the world. So I also saw in relation to that people being like, you know, the like the most common or the, like, the most virulent strain of COVID-19 in the US at the moment is the UK variant. Mm. And it's like, see, see, but it's like, He's not reincarnated as the, the UK variant. It was already there before he died. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite funny how... Well, not funny, I guess, because there's a global awful pandemic happening, but people are trying to tie it in when he's died kind of at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would have been... You know, can you imagine the, the excitement and the hullabaloo if he died at the start of it? Yeah. So... I've seen two takes on the numerology stuff relating to this. One take I saw was that, like, the numerology was all a distraction from what was really going on. Like, this is just to make things look dumb. Yeah. Then the other thing I saw was 
I, I, I saw the, all of this numerology stuff and then it also went into like this idea of him being reincarnated as the virus and a lot of, but then it went into a lot, like a lot of in-depth occult stuff about reincarnation and like different Illuminati factions that might believe in reincarnation. And so if you were into that sort of thing, it sort of made, it made sense within that broader sort of worldview slash narrative or whatever, right? But then some of the comments on that were like, all of this crazy sci-fi reincarnation stuff is just to make the sensible numerology stuff look dumb. <laughs> Discrediting numerology with more numerology. Yeah. Whereas probably like the stuff about the occult and the reincarnation, I don't know, sort of maybe technically made more sense. Like it... There was more, certainly more world building incorporated into it. <laughs> you really want world building in your occult? Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's yeah, what Crowley did best. Yeah, <laughs> he built worlds. So I, I did see someone suggest that maybe he was dead before April nine, and so they've had to release the news on April nine because that that fit the numerology. Uh, but like, I mean, the pictures of him. In the lead up to the death, where he was clearly dead. Yeah, like that's sort of a believable theory. It's, I guess, it depends on whether you think that the numerology is the way it is because the numerology is sending some sort of message. Mm. Like we've talked about that stuff before, like way, way, way back, where they think that Gematra, these things are encoded messages or, you know, mocking messages from the New World Order with your special knowledge you can decode, which is one way of looking at it. But the other way of looking at numerology is that things have to happen on certain dates for occult purposes, for, you know, maximum power on Mm. your rituals and things. And so if that's how you think things are going, which again, from a world building view makes more sense, it doesn't make any sense to kill him on some other day and then just put it in the newspaper a few days later. Yeah, but as we saw, he was... He was clearly health. already dead. So, like, they had to weekend at Bernie's at, until, and, you know, drive him around in a, in a car as a corpse mm. until the night. Ah, actually, and then trick trick the druids that are waiting there. They were waiting for the night. As, <laughs> as Philip going, oh, he's just driving past now. You he's can't alive. trick druids like that. You can absolutely trick druids like that. Imagine druids if- blinded by their hoods. No peripheral vision. They just see a snippet of him in the car. Oh, there he is. Still alive. Uh, look, I reckon maybe you could trick a druid with their limited vision mm, due to the hoods. Yeah. But when you are, you know, calling through Beelzebub from beyond this realm, like, you're not going to have the... It doesn't matter if the druids have been tricked. You don't have the power. You think Beelzebub and, hasn't got enough on his plate right now? And He's like, I'll leave this up to the... I trust the Druids. They did Stonehenge. Bang up job of that. We're still talking about it. They uh, have done some pretty, pretty sweet progressive rock over the years. Why would I not trust them with the death of Prince Philip? Yeah, maybe. I think you're not going to have enough power. You're not going to have enough juice. It's no good at being encanted into the, this reality if you don't have enough juice because they are. Oh, they killed you on the 7th. Yeah. Um, speaking of him being actually dead and kept alive, our good mate Jonesy weighed in. Oh, good. Pre him dying, uh, that Jonesy was actually saying at the time, look, another thing Alex Jones got right. <laughs> Wait, this is before he's dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he was going to die. I, the, lately on um, Infowars, they, they're really claiming that Alex Jones has just gotten so many things right. Another thing. And they've always kind of done that, but this is, it's, I feel like it's really ramped up. Just another thing. Uh, so he was actually dead and kept alive as a transhuman, um, like what's going to happen to Bill Gates, where they will upload their voice prints and their minds to a computer and an avatar and a zombie kind of version of them that'll be going around. Um, and they'll use that to escape judgment. She didn't really elaborate on, I'm assuming like from, from God, um, or hell from Beelzebub himself. So they had actually tricked Beelzebub by weekend at burning Bernie's at weekending at Bernie's at yeah yeah. Uh, 
by doing it using a voice print and a, a zombie avatar. Now, Alex Jones also says this is why uh, he's, he's referring to them as, as transhumans, which is you know the the kind of that um, people sticking body parts and um, you know tails to themselves and sci-fi things. He's saying that that's what's happening now, and that's why we can't say trans this and trans that. That's a direct quote, which is crazy to me because saying trans right now is something that you can absolutely say. Yes. And it's something we're really trying to highlight that trans people exist and trans people have rights. The entire left is kind of united behind that, except for TERFs, but we don't want to talk about them. So Jones is really misreading that. Is it a Jonesy that doesn't want to say trans this and trans that? <laughs> It really is, actually. <laughs> Jonesy's lawyered himself. What a bloody doofus. What a goose. Hey, we finally got him. Bit of QAnon stuff? Absolutely a bit of QAnon stuff. Oh, uh, can I just finish on a little bit of numerology that I, I noted down and forgot about? Yeah. Um, so, April 9th is National Unicorn Day, which is Scotland's national animal. What? Uh, <laughs> which is crazy because unicorns don't exist. But no. Uh, and so that was the day he died, and then they did a 666, a bit of gear on this, but then they say April is Aries, which is the horned ram. You've got horns, you've got beasts, uh, beast connotations, this person says. Do they not have it's any a- animals in Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming they have some. Surely, <laughs> surely it's time to update <laughs> the unicorn. They're like, all right, this is a bit childish. Let's like make Beg- Begbie they, our national animal. Do you think they looked at whales and they're like, well, they've got a mythical dragon and that's really working for them. Mm. Shall we... Uh, unicorn? Is that is that what's left? Yeah, right. A unicorn, uh, like, a unicorn's that like part of that ingrained in Scottish mythology? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, given my last name is Robertson, I feel like I should know more Scottish mythology, but I don't. I certainly don't. In Celtic mythology, yep. the unicorn is associated with purity and innocence. Well, that's what I think of when I think of Scotland, as well as masculinity and power. Now, what you've just clicked on, Cam, there's a fuzzy picture of a, a unicorn on the Visit Scotland website. Like someone that has spotted one in the wild. That sort of fuzzy picture? Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird one. You click through to the site and it's not there, but then there's that same picture but not fuzzy, and it's it's, uh, it's actually Nessie. Ah. Uh, it's weird. So maybe they're saying Nessie, if you look at the tail of Nessie, it looks like a point. So if you Nessie, fuzzy Nessie up, flip them around, yep. you've got a unicorn. Yeah, what the fuck? Scotland has an incredibly famous <laughs> mythical animal already. Yeah, They're like that nah, unicorns. I, admittedly, looking at Google images for unicorns, there's some really powerful looking unicorns with big long horns. Yeah, although, but apparently, part of the thing of the unicorn is that on the coat of arms is always depicted chained up. It's been tamed by the power of a Scottish king. Yeah, there is also picture of a uh, My Little Ponies unicorn. <laughs> this is from Reddit in front of a Scottish flag. Uh, this is Reddit slash uh, R slash MLP lounge, My Little Pony lounge. Uh, did you know unicorn is Scottish national animal? Um, someone said unreal national animal for an unreal nation. hi They've linked to something and then they've bracketed the Scots are going to kill me. I feel like, you know, if I'm getting all my kings together and we're getting our, like, crests out, like the business card scene from American Psycho, yep. and I'm pulling out, you know, my unicorn that I've tamed, like only a Scottish king can tame a unicorn. Like, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, everyone's going to laugh at you. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a D&D business card. Meanwhile, like, look at Paul Allen's crest. He's got, like, a mighty lion. Um, I've also found a picture from a Reddit uh, spin-off alternative called Steam It. Um, unicorn is a national animal, and it's a, it's a 
unicorn. Uh, I'm going to paint a picture. He's got rainbow, uh, what do you call that, mane and tail, gold horn, purple glasses that people would describe as Kanye West glasses. Mm -hmm. Those of us that are cultured would know they originate from the hit 80s movie The Last Dragon, which is where Kanye got the inspiration for those glasses from. Uh, beside the point, this unicorn is dabbing. <laughs> um, all right, that's enough unicorn gear. Yeah. So <laughs> what else has there been about You were this? doing QAnon. Uh, QAnon. Uh, so <laughs> this was great because the Q people haven't had a lot to do lately. There hasn't been a Q drop for a while, so they're sort of having to make their own fun. Mm. And uh, there was one theory about Prince Philip's death, which was that uh, the – the ship in the Suez Canal had been, you know, obviously held up, which meant that the shipment of adrenochrome that was coming for Prince Philip was also held up. And so this is why he's dead. He didn't get his shipment of loose in time. Oh. Is there nothing that Evergreen didn't take from us? Uh, uh, the only other thing I know it's taken is garden gnomes are in short supply in England. That's not true, is it? Is that not I just saw from, a headline about it. Is it from a and real like, headline or is it from a joke? No, I think it was real. It was just today. And honestly, that is the kind of headline I'd expect to see about England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like I didn't think oh, that's crazy. I went, oh, yeah, that's that's the kind of shit they get into. See, I guess the thing about this adrenochrome thing is the, the truth is perhaps stranger than fiction. Which is, Go on. I saw uh, you, you found this. Apparently, the royals like they have their own stock of their own blood on hand all the time. Yeah, this this came up in the news a couple of weeks before his death, and it was widely reported and I think verified that the Prince Philip and the Queen, and I think maybe even Prince Charles, get around with a bag of blood. Well, they don't get around with it; they have someone to hold it for them, mm. and. You kind of you hear that and go, well, that's crazy. Mm. But then you realize they're all freaking old. Yeah. And if they get sick in a, another country, like, even though they really just as meaningless figureheads, we've seen the meltdown that English people will have. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, if they die in Africa uh, on, a, on a trip, like, Africa, uh, England are going to get all bloody crazy and warry again. Yeah. <laughs> And try to colonize and, you know, do all these awful things again. So they've got to keep them alive if they get sick. So a good way to do that would be to have a supply of blood. So you're not, you know, risking a transfusion or something. And I, I read one quote from that that was like, um, the queen, oh, she tops it up with her own blood to stop any infection from someone else's blood. Mm. Which makes it sound like, the alternative would be to keep the blood bag topped up with other people's blood. <laughs> yeah. We've got 50 quarts of her blood or however many blood you need. Uh, we just keep topping it up from random strangers. She's like, no, it must be my own supply. Why is she constantly needing to top it up? I guess it goes off. Yeah, I suppose. Blood has a shelf life, surely. Do you reckon the guy who's in charge of carrying the blood, like that's his only job? Or is that, you know, he's got other tasks? Well, you'd just need a little esky, right? Like a little... Yeah. You know, the, like the pilot polystyrene ones they use for organs and stuff. A little bit of dry ice, I'm assuming. Mm. But I, like, I kind of don't want that guy to be distracted by other tasks. Like, well, he, he wouldn't need to carry it like, that close to the queen. He'd just need to leave it in his hotel room. It needs to be handy. How quickly do you need a transfusion if you need one? If you need one, you need it right away. Yeah, but like, leave it in his hotel room, and if anything goes wrong, you can jump in an Uber. Oh, my God. You're putting a lot of faith in you know, traffic around the world. Yeah. What if it's during surge pricing times and you, know, you can't get an Uber for 15 minutes? Every second counts. The royals can afford surge prices. If anyone can afford a surge price, it's these bloody royals. Anyway. Um, yeah, that, I mean, it's the kind of a thing that is quite weird. To, to hear, but when you think about it, you're like, ah, oh, it, like it sucks, and I don't condone that these mega rich royals that do nothing can go around the world with someone carrying their blood. But there is a, a somewhat rational well, explanation. It's, it's job, job creation. Yeah. Does, you know, the blood top ups, people do that, right? 
they get young people's blood to top up. Or is that just a Silicon Valley plotline? Oh, no. Well, I think that's sort of based on, yeah, a true thing that you would, like, yeah, might get the blood of a young person sort of transfused into yours for, like, health reasons or, like, yeah. dubious health reasons. I think that's sort of based on the truth. Yeah. Which is pretty cooked, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess you do it when you're, you know, when you're dying. But, yeah, just to get a little top up every now and then. Uh, I think that's a bit weird. You're not going to catch me doing it, Cam. No, I, shouldn't, I should hope not. You're just, Don't go looking into it any further. <laughs> you're disgusting blood. Uh, any QAnon, more QAnon things? Not really. But it's Does it's QAnon tough, people it's tough not admit, touch yeah. the fact that he was a creep? Well, I mean, I guess the other, the sort of main QAnon adjacent thing is that, like, Prince Andrew has sort of been a little bit back in the spotlight just because... I guess there's one less royal to take the spotlight away. So he Giving- was like he was like at the funeral and there was some sort of suggestion that, you know, maybe his this might be the beginning of an image rehabilitation process for him. Uh, I actually I feel uncomfortable saying this is QAnon adjacent because he actually is a nonce. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's famous creep and definite sex pest. Yeah, so the I did see some suggestions that like this might be the beginning of a rehabilit a image rehabilitation, but I, then I also saw somebody like, yeah, there were people that were just not speaking to him at the funeral. So I was like, I don't think it's going very well. But they were all socially distant anyway. Yeah. No, but I mean the other the other thing that Prince Philip was a creep. Yeah. Married his cousin. She was thirteen. He was eighteen. Yeah, it's a bit weird. A bit weird. Different time. Yeah. It's a different. You could be creepy with your cousins. It was normal. I did read a little bit about that. Where at the time Philip was described in the press as a blonde Greek Apollo, a Viking, and handsome as any film star. This is according to Town and Country magazine at the time. I looked at photos and like I know. Oh, yeah, here we go. Royal hot or not with Luke Robo Robertson? Yeah, and I, I know. I know that I'm not really good with knowing what is attractive in a, in a man to, to, you know, to people that are attracted to men. Like oh, I, <laughs> sometimes I think I, I have an idea and it turns out I'll ask, you know, ladies that I know and they're like, no, that's that's not right. <laughs> and so I looked at him. It's and, making and, like, me doubt some of the compliments you've given me over the years. But anyway, <laughs> go on. <laughs> but, like, I don't think he's – I don't think he you would look at him and go, at the Greek Apollo, he looks like an inbred royal. <laughs> Which he was. I'll be the I'll be the judge of this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whatever. You're not you're not thirsting for him. Hang on. I'm bringing it up. Young Prince Philip. You can do, play along at home too. I mean, some of these photos are definitely better than others. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got a bit of a weird shaped head. Yeah. And like by the time, yeah. No, not into it. Not my type, Cam. So what else have we got about? Well, I mean, there's just all of the normal stuff, right? He killed Princess Diana. Mm, we've got some DMX gear. What have you got on Diana? Oh, just the same. He didn't kill Diana. Go listen, go listen to our Princess Diana show. He didn't kill Diana, did, she, did he? Yeah. I don't want to relitigate the whole Diana thing. Uh, yeah, well, shall we wrap it up with some DMX gear? Yeah, so someone um, is speculating. Oh, no. Oh, oh firstly, let's, let's leave this DMX as a bit of a sizzle. Yep. Because uh, I watched a lizard video, yeah, classic. Oh yeah, like, we've got to get some lizard gear. This was a video that promised to, to capture him and the queen with uh, their eyes looking like lizard eyes and their teeth looking like lizard teeth, sharp and pointy. Uh, I mentioned him, but it was all the queen. Yeah, and the queen does have pretty pointy teeth, so I guess that's why you got to focus on her. Uh, but the only picture of, and it was like a lot of, you know low quality pictures, slow zoom ins mm. on normal looking eyes in a low quality picture. Uh the only picture of him was he was covering his eyes, which is the exact opposite of what the video promised me. Yeah. Although it is suspicious that he doesn't want us to see his lizard eyes. Mm, you got a point there. Touche. Uh DMX also died. Yeah. The rapper. Same day? Oh, was it? Well, it's just around the same time. Yeah, um, DMX death. I guess time zones would make that kind of confusing. 
Yeah, DMX, arguably, Same day. the opposite Same day. of Prince Philip. In what way? Black? Well, you know, Prince Philip's going around making racist gaffes, whereas DMX was going around being like, I will box George Zimmerman mm. and I will break all of the rules of boxing to beat him to a bloody pole. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his famous gaff. He shouldn't have said that. He should have just done it. So quite he did have some, quite opposite. He did have some homophobic lyrics that I reckon Prince Philip would probably be okay with. Oh no. All right. Not well, that many, but he did have a couple. Uh both of them had a really good show at Woodstock, <laughs> ninety nine. I don't think that's true. Mm. I don't think DMX no, was at Woodstock ninety nine. <laughs> wait, I'm getting DMX confused with corn. Oh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, so DMX also passed away, and this person on conspiracy slash no poll, sorry, slash conspiracy no poll, said, uh, Prince Philip, DMX, who will be the third? Because D- uh, cause famous people die in threes. And he was, look, he's asking the question, but in the comments he's speculating, and he's got some pretty strong theories that Hunter Biden is currently on a media rehab tour, mm-hmm. which I don't think he is. But no, rehab- he's, not rehab- a, he's not rehabilitating him, his, his image. No. It's, if, if anything, his image is getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> the less we see of Donald Trump's sons, <laughs> the more we realise that Biden's son is also not great. He's probably fine. Nowhere near as bad as those. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so Hunter's on the rebound. Because Harris is going to pick him as her vice president once Joe Biden dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Right, yeah. So Hunter Biden, so Joe Biden is going to be the third. That's why Hunter Biden is is in the media, as we're all seeing, just becoming the darling, the golden child of the media, uh, because he's going to be vice president. So they did both die on the same day. Yes. Uh, do we know if it was time, like what time and respective time zones, though? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't, we don't need to drill down into that, but carry on. But like, so <laughs> on that day, there are another like fifty other celebrities died. Like, you know, celebrities of different things, such as like the former Attorney General of the United States. <laughs> okay, and also who was also the uh, the lawyer. Well, it just says American lawyer, and then in brackets, Saddam Hussein Slobodan Milosevic, which I don't know if that means he was their lawyer or if he prosecuted them <laughs> as the attorney general. Could really go either way with oh, no, American well, attorney general. He was attorney general 1966 to 1969, so he was probably the lawyer for Saddam Hussein and Slobodan Milosevic. Yeah. yeah so definitely. would he be the third? But then you've also got like Eckhard Fasser, the Swiss bobsledder. Uh, uh, yeah, Rudolf him. Rudolf Firmanov, the actor who you would remember from the circus burned down, the clowns have gone. I want to go to prison. Wait, is that all one movie? Ah, oh, no, it's two movies. So hang on, is the circus burned down the, the circu- first one? The circus burned down and the clowns have gone is one movie, and then the other movie oh. is I want to go to prison. How good would it be if the whole thing was one movie? By your your intonation, I thought it was the circus has burned down. First movie, second movie. Circus has been down too. <laughs> All the clowns have gone. I want to go to prison. Someone from Big Brother died. Oh, I saw. No, I didn't. I saw a no. I saw a TikTok about an unrelated thing. Carry on. Various old politicians. They're always dying. But yeah, you could pull out a politician on on like using the Q and on or the whatever scale you want to use. If you're going by that method, you just pull out any one of these people and be like, yeah, see, he also died. Yeah, there's no one really on the same level as Prince Philip or. Uh... DMX. I guess it depends on how much you care about, like, a te- the Italian art scene or suburban classical music. Suburban Serbian. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a good burn on Serbia though? If like we wanted to tell them off for being so pedestrian. What their classical can you read? Can, can you say the burn, please? <laughs> if we just call them suburban. <laughs> so you'd say what your <laughs> <laughs> your classical music sounds a bit suburban. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the time where you can use that, Cam. Anyway, this is the sort of stuff that Salty would have put a stop to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's it. 
it is it. Uh, we've got a new show coming up, and Cam, a little teaser. Uh, I think I've got a theory that you might think is a bit cooked. Well, sign up at uh, patreon.com slash hypothetical institute or whatever the URL is. Yep. I trust in you, <laughs> gentle listener. Find it somehow. Uh, and you'll be able to hear that new show. And we'd also like to thank our cooked $33 sponsors, Tammy and Vanessa. Thank you for your support. Robbo, and where where can they find you, mate? Give me at Ale of a Time, Ale of a Time dot com. Uh, we just labelled up our next Patreon beer, which is really exciting. So that'll be going out to people, and we're launching hopefully this week a new spin-off show with my good friends Tiff and Lindsay. Uh, I've just edited it, and they were concerned it was too angry uh, and too feminist to be published. And I said, just right. Looking forward to publishing it. So, and what is that about? Some, uh, beer stuff. All right. Uh, so when it's up, it'll be crack the ceiling or crack the glass ceiling. Anyway, follow all of the time on social media and uh, yeah, here's some um, some queer and women's issues in the beer scene discussed, which is really exciting. But also with a pun in the title, I assume it's a pun, right? Like yeah, so it's a play on the mastodon. Like of. It's a play on the mastodon album, Crack the Sky, <laughs> right? Because that has a whale on the cover, and Isle of a Time is a whale. Yeah. It isn't, but I just realised that, and I am enjoying it. So, Cam, where do people find you? What about Tiff and Lynn's Drink Some Gins as another spin-off? Yeah. Uh, Salty, <laughs> you can find at Salt Marsh everywhere. Toe Hider uh, on Patreon. Twitch. He had his first Twitch anniversary, which was The Salt on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently that was a bit of a, a good shindig. People people had a good time. Yeah, check it out. He's doing some fun stuff over there. And you can find me at Sexenheimer on Twitter. Yana Pesaran is my radio show on 3CR. We've got a show coming out this week with Dr. M. R. X. Dentith, who is a doctor of philosophy and an expert on conspiracy theories, which people who listen to this may find interesting. We'll talk a bit about the philosophy of conspiracies. Sounds good. All right. See you later. Bye. Don't worry about a thing. Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians. I said don't worry about a thing. Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs. Don't worry a thing except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia I said don't worry about a thing I accept you can definitely hear John Lennon say I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever Ooh, don't worry about a thing except not only did Bush do 9-11 but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which let's not forget where all the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing, except Donald Trump is clearly a woman and you're just blind if you can't see them. Why don't you open your eyes?